Hello, my name is Mike Riddle. I'm the president and founder of Creation Training Initiative. Today we're here to talk about one of the great events in America's history, an event that we still celebrate today, July the 4th. Now, why do we celebrate July the 4th? Not because of all the family time we might have, not because of all the food and backyard barbecues we might have, also not because of all the parades we might watch, and also not because of all the fireworks and events that go on. These are part of the celebration, but they're not the reason we celebrate. We celebrate July 4th because it is the anniversary of our signing of our Declaration of Independence, our breaking away from the mother country England to form a new independent nation. Now that celebration is not just about our becoming a new independent nation. The celebration is also about the very values this country was founded upon. It is about the very rights and freedoms this country was founded upon. The events of that day, July 4th, 1776, were enormous because they changed the course of history. Our nation has a long and proud history. Sometimes we've been a nation in turmoil and we've made some wrong decisions. Well, we've always been a nation that has stood for freedom. Our flag is a symbol of the freedom our forefathers fought and died to preserve. One thing that has made America a great nation is that we've always been able to rise up unforgettable men and women in unforgettable times. Men and women who displayed courage, honor, and commitment. Men and women who left a legacy for the next generation, a legacy of freedom. Men who did pay the ultimate sacrifice so that we could live today in this great nation, America, the land of the free and the home of the brave. But today, America is in a battle that will determine if this country can maintain its independence as a nation and maintain that we have rights that come from a greater God. This is the greatest battle America has ever been involved. It is a battle for the very heart and soul of the nation. Now, after all the wars America has fought, the physical wars, the Civil War, the World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War. We survived all those wars, not without great damage, but we survived. The question is then, are we prepared to fight this battle? Or have we become so weakened that we have lost our resolve to defend what this country once was, one nation under God? We are today engaged in a great new civil war, not between the blue and the gray, but still a war of brother against brother. This is the most crucial war in our nation's history. This is not a war being fought with guns and bombs. It is a war for values. It is a war of ideas. It is a war of worldviews. It is a war for the heart and soul of America and the freedoms that have been preserved with a high price. If America is to survive, we must hold on to the fact that we have certain unalienable rights that come from our Creator and that all men are created equal. If America is to survive its people, the church will have to recover their belief in the authority of God's word and train up the next generation to stand firm and defend their faith. Until that day comes, our freedoms and rights will continue to erode away to the state. We must as a nation preserve our foundation for what has made America great. And two things that have made America great. One, because of our biblical heritage. And two, because we've always been able to rise up unforgettable men and unforgettable women in unforgettable times. On this July 4th, we celebrate our past. We celebrate our nation, America. But we need to celebrate our Creator God, for He has made the heavens and the earth. It is He who has guided and protected us through all these wars. He has preserved our nation. But Lord, how much longer will you endure our troubled times and our rebellion? Our nation has turned its back on you. Our Christian schools and universities don't know we're in a war, and as a result, turn out men and women with academic degrees, but who cannot defend their faith. Many of our churches have become lazy and afraid to teach truth. Our people are untrained and we are losing our children to the world. Oh Lord, we need these unforgettable men and women in these unforgettable times. Men and women with courage, honor, and commitment who are willing to boldly speak the truth. Men and women who will train up a new generation to stand firm on your word. 
This day, Lord, let us not just remember our past and those who have helped make this country great. Let us call out to the only one who can save this country, you, Lord, the God of our salvation. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and give strength to all. Now therefore, O oh God, we thank you, and we praise your glorious name. If these lessons had been a blessing to you, you might consider financially supporting the Ministry of Creation Training Initiative. You can do this by going to our website, creationtraining.org. Again, that's creationtraining.org. Your tax-deductible donation of just $20, $50 or more a month, or a one-time gift of any amount will make you an education partner in building an army of Christian educators who can teach the biblical account of creation and train others to be able to defend their faith and be biblically faithful to God's Word as it states in 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear.